Coming up, experimental satellite launch. SpaceX prepares for a pad abort test. And I interview the Google Lunar X Prize guys. Stay tuned, tomorrow begins right now. Welcome to tomorrow. I am your co-host, but uh, right now I'm playing the role of host again, Carrie and Higginbotham, and I am actually going to be getting right into our interview. But first, I want to make sure that I thank our Patreon Premier members. These are the people who have uh, donated ten dollars or more to each and every single one of our episodes that we are doing right now, at least this segment, and uh, it's really amazing, you guys. I, I really, very sincerely, cannot thank you enough. And uh, it's, it's I'm, I'm at a loss for words, I apologize, but it's really awesome that you guys are doing that for us and hopefully we are giving back to you at least $10 or more for each and every single one of these shows. So anyway, so let's get right into it. Right now we have got uh, Leo Camacho and Mr. Nathan Wong from the Google Lunar X Prize, well, X Prize Foundation, right. because you're working on the Google Lunar X Prize, is that correct? Actually, so Nathan, since I last saw you. Yes, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Nathan, we, we said, uh, it's been a minute. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nathan is now. Uh... So I, uh, I left and went to France and worked at the International Space University yes. for a little bit. Um, and then now I'm back on the Google Lunar X Prize doing technical operations. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And then I've shifted over to the foundation side. So now oh. I'm working on all the prizes. Um, and especially our Disney education prizes, which we now do. We do education and I with love Disney, it. Of right? course. And it's all around actually kind of, you know, future technology. We started with Big Hero 6 and it might uh, be a trend hmm, going forward. Interesting. Mm, the name of your show is oddly appropriate. Let's yes, yes, yes. Let's just yes. say that. As we, uh, last time you were on, we were called Space Vidcast, and we had a very, right. very close space sort of focus, and now we've kind of shifted a little bit to tomorrow. Yeah, futurology. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's, I dig it. It's kind of a thing. You know, maybe you've kind of got it from us, but we're not going to discuss that right now. You guys have influenced my entire career path, yes, FYI. Yes, obviously. <laughs> space I, and Disney. Totally understand, totally understand. Um, so... Uh, I don't know who to direct the questions to necessarily, but here in the middle, generally, there you go. And I'll push Bleh, in the <laughs> there have been a lot of things coming out of the Google Lunar X Prize as yeah. of late. Yeah. So uh, give it to me. Give it all to me. So there's the two main things that have come out of the Google Lunar X Prize. The first is that we've extended the prize mm -hmm. until 2016, contingent awesome. on yeah. uh, a team uh, proving to us that they have a launch contract. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second thing is the milestone prizes. That's sort of been the 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 workhorse oh, of God. Google Lunar X Prize for the everything. for the last year for sure um, and so to see that come to a culmination and a finish has been really great for the foundation for the teams um, and like the the ops team on GLXP we're, we're super proud of mm, yeah, of what happened it's basically reinvigorated the whole sort of approach I know. You know, as you know, the timelines in space are f forever long. <laughs> yeah. and no, this... always about six months out, is oh, my understanding. Right? Six months plus six, six months... months plus six months. Right, there yeah, you go. Every okay, time yeah. there's a scrub. Uh, <laughs> carry, carry the one. Carry the one. Carry the one. Thank I you. Oh, to goodness. the umpteenth power. Uh, but this sort of, yeah, this kind of just showed everybody that things are currently happening. It just added a lot of visual element because, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the way they had to test um, the milestone prizes out was in, it, almost entirely visual. And the, mm -hmm. and the milestone prizes really led to the extension as well. So we saw an increase in the rate of technology that these teams were producing, uh, and we're, we're, we're confident that that trend is gonna continue. Right. And so it really helped us solidify in our mind and in our sponsor's mind that this competition is very worthwhile right. uh, and that things that are happening are progressing us towards getting us a team to the moon. Right, and you know, it's all incentivized competition, and this was like major yes. incentive. Yes, <laughs> it's so like huge incentive. Because to be honest, uh, you know, Ben and I, we talk about what the things that we want to talk about mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were a little bit sad. I was like, I haven't heard boo. I feel like, right? I mean, and it's one of those things no, of like right. Right. ducks swimming under or swimming on top of water, right? Feet are always moving, but it feels like the duck isn't really going anywhere. Right. And wow, uh, that's a perfect analogy. <laughs> <laughs> but, right? Social media content on Monday. All of these things, right? All of these things are going on, but you don't you don't necessarily always hear the output. Yeah. And uh, and it, we were kind of getting sad, and we were wondering what was going on, and then we're like, wait, 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 milestone prices. And yeah. so I suppose I should actually back up a little bit because we discussed earlier it had been two years since we two last years. had you guys yep. on, it's been which a minute. is insane. It does not even feel like that. Uh, maybe we should back up just a half second and talk about what the Google Lunar X Prize actually is. Oh. 
Okay. I forgot. Right? <laughs> it's I know. been so it's long. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, so the Google Lunar X Prize, Google Lunar X Prize, yes. is an incentivized competition to get private teams to go back, to go to the moon. Awesome. For so, good. For good. Right? Uh, so <laughs> currently only three governments have done that. The United States, the, the Soviet Union, and China most recently. Awesome. Um, and the X Prize Foundation, along with our sponsor Google, we want to extend this, the economic sphere of influence to what is now geostationary uh, satellites and extend that all the way to the moon. And we think that uh, private companies can do that in a, a way that's more efficient than governments can, mm-hmm. um, but supplemental to governments. So it's, it's not a, an independent ecosystem. It's, it's right. everyone sort of working together and seeing how that happens. Which is nice. It's actually nice timing with, uh, you know, SpaceX in the news every other week <laughs> and Elon Musk paving the way and then we're like, hey, we're doing it too. And it's like kind of showing that many bodies are involved in this sort of like, right. so the, sphere. The first, the first private team to get to the moon, move 500 meters, broadcast back HD video, mm-hmm. will win the uh, $20 million purse. And we currently have 18 teams in the competition. Uh, five of those teams were in the milestone mm-hmm. uh, round. Uh, all 18 teams are still eligible to win the grand prize. Okay. Right. Um, and yeah, then so 20 million grand prize. Um, $5 million, million dollars second, second place, place prize. We have some bonus prizes in there as well. And then recently this five million. So we actually just went to a $35 million competition overall, which right. is kind of cool. That's a lot of money. <laughs> that's crazy. That is a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so uh, we have a, a question coming in from the chat room, so huh? I want to make sure that we get to that for sure. Um, to Wicked asked, do you really think that any of the teams make uh, will make the current deadline? Will most teams ever reach the launch pad? Now, I don't know how involved you are specifically with each and every team and what well, the details you are. Well, he works very closely with yeah. them. Yeah, so obviously not all 18 teams are going to make the launch pad. Right. And the, the, the point of the competition isn't that all 18 teams make it. Mm-hmm. Um but we're very confident that after these milestone prizes, that teams are well on their way to getting there. Um, so uh, people always say this in the space industry. It's not a matter of what, of if, but when. Right. Um, but we really think that's the case here as well. Yeah, and I think the milestones were kind of good proof that these teams are adamantly working on this. is sort of a kick in the pants because right. now it's like, well, let's step it up and push our deadlines forward so that we can get that extra money. And but, the, the big part about the milestone prizes is that we brought in our independent judging panel mm-hmm. to review their hardware uh, right. to make sure that they're not just flying PowerPoints. Yeah. yeah, we use the word hypercredible. You know, so these judges were very, you know, they're very thorough in their analysis, right. essentially. And if the technology wasn't real, they weren't going to win this money, right? We weren't right. just awarding it to get people to look at our news feed. For sure. Yeah. For sure. That's very cool. Yeah. So you have 18 teams yep. spread across the entire world. Correct. Mm-hmm. So we have teams in the U.S., we have teams in South America, teams in Europe, uh, teams in the Middle East, and teams in Asia. Yeah. Wow. And it's actually kind of interesting um, to even you know, further the point that these teams are serious about it. <clears throat> Moon Express, which is currently in San Francisco, is moving their entire facility over to Florida. Yeah. You don't make a move of that magnitude if you're not serious about something <laughs> like this. So. I think it was really cool that in the milestone teams... It really represented all the regions that we were in, right. too. So it wasn't mm-hmm. just U.S. teams in it. We had two teams from the U.S. We had one team from Germany. Uh, we had well, one Japan. team from Japan. Yeah. yeah, And India. And then, yeah, another from India. Mm-hmm. That's so really cool. So it, it really represented A the diverseness of the right. competition yeah. and showing that the entire world is able to produce this technology. It's not just... Not just centered here in the U.S. Right, and sure. what's also fascinating is how each team had strengths in different areas. Like you were saying, only one team will ultimately make it, most likely. Right. Uh, unless they ride share, of course. Um, but the strengths that each team ride sort share. of... Is there an HOV lane to the... Yeah, they can, they can carpool to the moon. <laughs> uh, <it's laughs> the Uber, diamond Uber, lane. Uber moon. Uber yes, moon, have Uber you moon. done that? Have you done uh, that? You know, you I haven't it? yet. It's a the, little it's, bit more expensive than yeah. Uber Black. <laughs> but, the, um, but the drivers are but, super friendly because they're kind of new. And they're, and they're, and they're rated. Crazy, right, crazy. that's good. Uber, good. Uber, Uber Black, Uber Moon. Yes, this guy got Uber Moon. Sorry, yeah. totally. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> uh, but the team that developed Uber Moon, no. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's just neat because you can see from the teams that won each individual milestone because we, uh, we had imaging, we had mobility, and then we had um, landing. landing. Um, you can see their strengths in each, but even the teams that weren't competing in that are mm-hmm. still going strong, and they all have their own specialties. So all of that sort of contributes to the to the landscape. Um, and that we're trying to accomplish. important to note that the teams weren't competing against each other; right. mm-hmm. they were competing against themselves. Mm-hmm. And the the philosophy behind that is we want to raise all the boats. Right. Cooperation, right? Yeah. Or, float, or the raising, uh, was it raising. 
Tide, Rising All Tide, right. Boats. There you yeah. go. There you go. Yeah, but but yeah, there were multiple winners. It wasn't like this team won the imaging prize. Like these right. teams won the imaging prize. That's very you know, they cool. They met the deadlines, they met the specifications, and now they have the money. That's very very cool. So in the spirit of cooperation, as it were, wow. are, do the teams uh, because I know the teams have contact with each other yeah. a little bit uh, because you guys have a summit at least once a yeah. year. Yeah. Is that correct? Still once a year. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so. How much do they help each other or do they not? Or do is there a lot of uh, feeling of camaraderie because all these people are doing... I almost said guys, so I apologize. Mm, but all, all these peeps. people are doing... You know, they're all go, working towards the same goal. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the teams each have their own individual strategies and some teams are uh, holding their cards close and some mm-hmm. teams are more open and collaborative. Um, but when all these teams meet, it, it is a... It's not a competition. Right. It, it is. It is people at, coming at together the summit, and it's collaborating. At the summit, it's a very different thing at the summit. Everybody stops being, you know, if they didn't have any communication, suddenly they're best friends because Funny. they you need know, to do this they're, together. They're eating yeah. together. They're laughing. Yeah. Even at the Milestone yeah. Prize Awards, we had um, the five team leads all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had dinners and interviews with them, and it was... And then we made them fight like, to the death. It was yes. That was the crazy part. But it was, it was, it was just amazing to see them all uh, interacting with each other, and something that we, yeah. you don't get to see all the time. Right. Of... Five very influential people in the space industry and, yeah. uh, getting together. And also at this point of the competition, many of our teams have already merged. So um, I suppose, they, or they've, yeah. they've purchased each other or they've just partnered up or maybe one team lost the resources and didn't have, you know, on their own enough to continue. But right. they've sort of piled that onto another team and now they have tool influence. So, uh, yeah, we've seen it in the past. We're going to see it in the future. You're just going to see a lot of that merging. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm getting a couple more questions from the chat room, if that's all right with you guys. Never, never. Uh, so the prize is $20 million to the winning team. Right. How does that compare with the team with what the teams expect to spend to get there? So the teams expect to spend um, anywhere from uh, – 10 to 60 million dollars in order wow. to complete their total mission. Right. So they're not going to get their total money back, right. so, so to uh, speak. And that's that's really the point with all incentive-based prizes right. is mm-hmm. that you're not uh, subsidizing these teams. You're just providing uh, a carrot at right. the end. Mm-hmm. And it's it's important for the foundation. Uh, one of the main goals is to create a sustainable lunar economy. Right. For sure. So that 20 million dollars uh, isn't going to pay for an entire mission, but it's mm-hmm. going to give you a little seed chunk so that you can continue going after the fact. Right, it might be the initial step to your next mission, for sure, uh, so to speak. But uh, but essentially, you think about what this competition means to the teams, and what's it been going on now, seven years? Yeah, Eight? yeah seven years? Mm-hmm. It's been seven years of essentially free international marketing. Right. You know, so as a company, that's that's priceless. Um, and not to mention the connections that you're making through the other teams, through the Google Winner X Prize, through investors, through sponsors, and, and, and just the global attention that you're getting. Do a lot of these teams have plans beyond, I, I would imagine at this point yeah. for sure, but yeah. do they have a lot of plans beyond the Google Lunar X Prize? Yeah. yeah. I, I think that the Google Lunar X Prize is almost a secondary thing yeah. for most of these teams at this point because they've become so established. Interesting. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hakuto, one of the Japanese teams, they have multiple rovers that they're working on for multiple missions. Mm-hmm. Moon Express <clears throat> has a, a series of progressively more challenging missions. Just mm. one of them is starting with the Google and Rex Prize and ending with a sample return. Wow. Uh, Astrobotic has plans right. to deliver uh, multiple rovers to the moon on right. their lander. They, they want to start mining the moon and actually create a business out of that in and of itself. And Very in cool. the process, they're competing in the Google right. And then Express. maybe, maybe right. we'll win 20 mil on the side, no big. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. I know, <laughs> And I know that our uh, Chilean team and our Floridian team, um, and even and, and Penn State, which is also comp- comp- competing, they look to kind of um, create an educational track that kids can wow. go into college and already start working in the space industry. Yes, it moves the industry forward, but it also kind of gives real hard engineering yeah. experience. And, yeah. and it's important that the teams that don't win, they still have a chance to continue on after right. the prize, totally. uh, specializing in what they can specialize in. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, more questions from the chat room. Is not the milestones a bit of an admission that the X Prize is not getting the momentum that Google was initially looking for? Uh, wow, so the, Johnny Boy. Yeah, that's, someone, that's, someone's that's been doing their homework. That's a rough question yeah, there, right. man. Someone's dipping it. No, that's that's man. a real situation that we deal with. Yeah. Uh, so the milestone prizes uh, were started, yes, of, of course, to accelerate what the teams were doing. Sure. Um, it wasn't to make them do something that they weren't already planning to right. do, mm-hmm. or to change the course of their design. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, th- I think we found that by putting an extra interim deadline in there, mm-hmm. it forces teams to go a little bit faster. Right. Interesting. Uh, and then adding, so the deadline is one, 
the money helps a, a lot. Right. For sure. And then we found that even the recognition from the judges right. helps mm. the most. So it gives them that street cred. Right. I mean, because yeah. like, like this person is saying, right? Yeah. They're looking at this competition going, oh, and, and what you were saying earlier is kind of quiet. Yeah. And that, that kills, you know, the team's enthusiasm for, for sure. this. And but also the money. Yeah. And so then we're also hoping that the milestone prize is, in addition to just technology, is helping teams close their business case. Right. Exactly. So helping them raise nice. the additional yeah. set of funds. And we've, we've seen that that's probably one of the harder problems that these teams have been facing mm-hmm. is the, the capital problem. Right. Because for, to an investor, this hasn't been done before. So it's right. an additional risk on top of the fact that space is risky by nature anyway. For sure. So it's, uh, you know, it, it adds something tangible for, for everyone to kind of take hold of. Very cool. That's, that's fair. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, another question coming from Joe Wicked says, what team has surprised you the most? And I'll expand that mm. just a little bit to what maybe situation or something that's come up that has surprised you the most that you just didn't anticipate or didn't expect or, you know, is that... Yeah, no, I, I already I already have my answer. I yeah. always have the same answer. <laughs> well, I, for me, it's Independence X. It's, uh, okay. That team just has continually surprised me over yeah. and over again. I mean, they, they essentially started in, in, I mean, for lack of a better word, a, gar- a, gar- a literal garage, okay. a very small group of, group of guys. And now they've single-handedly sort of contributed to the infrastructure of the space industry in their country. You know, now the government's utilizing them. Now they're going to help start launching. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Malaysia, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's like so inspirational. And through this sort of accessibility, he's been able to develop new technologies. He's looking at developing a new kind of thruster. I mean, the, the guy's completed so much because he just had a little bit of a platform to stand on. Right. You know, uh, and to me, that's most inspirational. But that's just, you know, that's sort of like the everyday man making it. Right. Uh, but I feel like there's tons of other angles, too, like uh, like part-time scientists. Yeah. Have sort of creating a brand around it. It's, it's really you know? interesting to yeah. see teams of really mm-hmm. small people mm-hmm. making big accomplishments. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, that's the most surprising. You look at uh, a NASA who's really big. Or even a, even a SpaceX now who has yeah. lots and lots of engineers. Mm-hmm. And these Google Lunar X-Prize teams average uh, 10 to 60 people working <laughs> on that. Super small teams going to the moon. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's crazy. So that that's is. Crazy. It's, it's, it's tough for even me to wrap my head around that these small groups of people are making gigantic leaps for towards sure. making it to the moon. It's it's. So, it's, I mean, it's awesome. It says yeah. one thing about technology, like, wow, that's crazy that anybody yeah. can do this. But it also says something about their motivation. You know, just anybody can, if you have the desire to do it, you can pull oh, these tools together and go to the cool. moon if you want, you know? Very, very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's. It's, it's wild. I mean, yeah. literally the Wild West, right? But, yeah. but it is crazy to think about the fathom of, it in such a short amount of time. Because you think, how long did it take for our country to, to develop a space program? Right. And these people are taking, like, spare parts and building things that could potentially be in the moon in the next few years. It's really, it's Moore's Law applied to space. Right. Yeah. So these teams are able to access much better technology at a much cheaper cost. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't even apply to exa- only to Google Lunar XPRIZE teams. There's Planet Labs, there's Spire, there's Skybox, and they're doing uh, awesome things that you could only do with big, gigantic satellites uh, with smaller teams. Right. Totally. And even uh, SpaceX or Virgin Galactic OneWeb, mm-hmm. uh, they're able to utilize these technologies right. on an exponential scale. For and we sure. think that's really cool at X Prize too. Yeah. Well, that's that's what we set this out for, right? Uh, we're learning so much about prize operations and, and yeah. execution because GLXP is the first humongous prize of this scale, right? We didn't know how to take it on at first, and now we've learned so much, and we're applying it to our other prizes. So going forward, like you were saying, hmm. it, you know, adding these interim sort of objectives um, might be something we look at in the future. Yeah. So mm-hmm. almost all of our prizes now have uh, an interim date in them where there's either a cutoff or a down select. Interesting. And, and mm-hmm. seven years ago, Google Earth X Prize was started, and we had learned from Ansari, uh, and we're still yeah. learning from some of our prizes that are launched now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we really want to make sure we find the best way to run these right. prizes, for sure. so that it's most beneficial for the teams. You know, and, and and at the core of all this is you're gonna have, you know, like I said, we're running for on seven years now. Mm-hmm. How do you tell a story over seven years? Yeah. When it takes a year for the first bit of the story to come out. <laughs> and what are you doing in the meantime? For you sure. Know, what's all that downtime? Um, uh, so that's been another consideration and like that question was saying did, mm-hmm. did Google lose enthusiasm it's like no you just don't see it right, right. and so how do we keep a public facing competition that's interesting and engaging mm-hmm. uh, not only to the public but to the teams and to the investors right. and, and that's been the, single handedly the biggest thing we've learned from GLXP it's, it's, it's insane the amount of data we've pulled from this already not to mention once we launch or go right. to the moon or yeah. whatever may happen from this competition how much data we'll have then so 
Very cool. Yeah, it's right. nuts. <laughs> oh, that's that is that is is okay. Uh, more questions. Yeah. If you're looking for a sustainable lunar infrastructure, what happens if a team does just a flags and footprints missions just to get there? Rolls of 500 meters, transmits HD images, and then nothing. But I think exactly. we, we were just about talking about that. this at yeah. lunch the other day. So it's it's in the prize design of mm-hmm. some of the requirements that we don't think that this is going to happen. Um, and even if it happens for one team, mm-hmm. they do that mission, they win the Google Lunar X Prize, there's still 17 other teams out there who right. are going to continue on behind them. And and that's where the sustainability comes in. It's not that the winning team is sustainable, it's that the industry is sustainable. All we did was jumpstart it. You know, these teams are going to go now. They've invested so much time and money for them to just completely stop after one team makes it would be almost silly. <laughs> yeah. So, they're not going to be like, all right, boys, pack it in, we're going home. Cool. The last eight years, just kidding. You know, like they're going to keep going with it. And, Our names are in the history books. Right. That's all we wanted. Right. We're I mean, Astro- Astrobotic already has a business plan around this sort of right. model of returning you know, to the moon. It's not yeah. just a one-time affair. Multiple That's teams awesome. have post um, Google Lunar X Prize missions planned. Right. right. And for us, that's a, that's already a success. I, okay, so uh, another question says, slightly off topic, where should the next human boot prints be stepped? Moon, Mars, or an asteroid? <sighs> You know, I, it's so funny. I was just casually talking about this the other night, and and because uh, I was watching how space geeks well, just kind of casually watching, talk about that. I was watching Doctor <laughs> Who, uh, yes, episode two, uh, mm. season six, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> this is where like uh, you know minute forty seven. Yeah, um, technically, but it's all it's about the moon landing, and we were yes. like, and he you know he makes a statement about how you know that man landing on the moon will echo out through history when mankind is spread throughout the stars. They'll always remember that one moment, what mm. a big impact it was. And I was like, wow, that's cool. You know, we stepped on the first, that was the first celestial body outside of our own that we stepped on. So what is the next step? You know, mm-hmm. is it, and I, for me, I feel the next step on a mage, on a planet mm-hmm. will be, I feel like that would be the, the next huge, I mean, an asteroid, yes. Right. But I mean, we've seen Armageddon, so. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Very feet. dangerous. Yeah. So I think we might have to go with a planet to be on the safe side. <laughs> Plus, we can do things if we land on a planet, right? If we land right, on an asteroid, right. it's, it's not going to... I mean, we can mine it. Yes. But we're not going to move a colony to an asteroid. Do you think like, the moon sure. is a planet? No. Okay, good. No. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're saying there. No, I'm saying, but if we go to a planet, yeah, like if we go to a planet, planet, we can start building on a planet, right? Yeah. Right. Asteroid's a little more difficult, I feel. I'm biased. I think I think the moon. Yeah. Uh, not only because I work on Google Lunar X Prize, but well, it's, it's because it's, it's the true, thing right? that you can see in the night. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing for me. Uh, it's reachable. It's attainable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's if, if you don't know that Mars space. is out there, mm-hmm. you don't know that that bright point of light is Mars. You think it's another star. But there's no denying that the moon is there. And, you know, I'm not saying that the Mars isn't there. No, no, no. <laughs> no, that no, big, no, big no, silvery thing no, in the No, no, no. That's very but, poetic. And, you know, and it's something that we've yeah. discussed on the show a number of times is that uh, we, while a, a colony base on Mars... Is, sure. is necessary for right. a lot of different yeah. reasons, and and it's something that we would be looking forward to. There is something different about having that yeah. connection with the moon. I definitely agree, and I think the moon should be the next place we we start building on. But I mean, as far as the next boot print, because we have a boot print on the moon, right? The question is, where should the next boot print be? I think the next boot, like the fresh print where no one has ever stepped, right. should be Mars. Yeah. Nice. I think it's definitely it's definitely a progression. Yeah. Well, the right. moon is the next step towards that, right? So there you go. Right. Milestone. Yeah. Milestones. I One love thing it. Full at a time. Ah, ah, like that. Full orbit. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So for now, why don't we wrap this up? We will keep you guys come back on for After Dark. Maybe okay. talk a little Ooh. Disney. Maybe. Mm. Not? Well, I don't know anything about kinda, that. Kind of, yeah. See? I, I might have to force you that. into that conversation. <laughs> I understand. That's fine. Uh, but th- thank you. Thank you for no, joining us. It's always a pleasure. And, you, you know, know, as soon as something interesting comes up yeah. again, I'm just kidding. Of well, course. actually, can I, can I throw something at please, your please audience? Please, please do. Yes. So, so XPRIZE just launched the Global Learning XPRIZE yes. uh, competition. And uh, that's a $15 million competition of grand prize of 10 and then five in secondary prizes. Um, but... It just opened up, and we're recruiting right now. Okay. So, if, and and so, let me tell you a little bit about this prize. So, it's to create a software, an open source software, that can teach writing, reading, uh, reading arithmetic mm-hmm. without using writing, reading, and arithmetic gotcha. to teach it. Um, so, so it's still kind of uh, it's kind of blurry on the edges. So, if mm-hmm. you can develop the software, if you know software developers or coders or designers or whatever, and you want to jump on this prize, it'd be a really cool opportunity to not only benefit the world, but to kind of make a little bit of money in the process and start some businesses. Um, so, if you're interested, go to learning.xprize.org and uh, find out about registering your team. Very cool. And if you're interested more about the Google Lunar X Prize, you can go to lunar.xprize.org. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, 
there you have it. And uh, we'll hit a commercial, come back with Ben, do some news. Come right back at you. See you soon. We've always looked to the stars. They guide us, give us comfort, help us find our way. We see ourselves out there. When we look up, it inspires us. And we long for something we don't yet know. We yearn to go there. So, we venture forth. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. Many think we stopped exploring. But we know. Our journey didn't end. We've only just begun. Orion is functioning perfectly at this point. Come with us and explore tomorrow. Welcome back to Tomorrow. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. Of course, we've still got Carrie Ann. Great interview in the first segment with Thank the Google, the Google Lunar X Prize, uh, the X Prize Foundation. Uh, some pretty awesome stuff. Um, all right, before we get into space news, I did want to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreon subscribers. These are the producers of Patreon. They contributed at least five dollars to this specific episode. If you'd like to help contribute to this episode, you can head on over to Patreon.com/tmro. We are a crowdfunded show and every single dollar helps. All right, let's go ahead and get started with some space news. First up, an experimental satellite launch on Saphir. That was all of the resolution. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is an Iranian rocket. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. It's a two-stage Saphir booster, and uh, this is the first time they've been able to launch since February of 2009. Uh, or at least the first satellite launch in February 2009. It's their fourth satellite. It's exper the experimental satellite is named FAJR, F-A-J-R. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but it stands for DAWN, and it's the uh, uh, first time they've been able to successfully do that in about three years or so. So congratulations to them for uh, making it up there. Uh, this was not widely broadcast, so that's why the resolution is so low. Uh, but yeah, it looks we like gave it, you all the pixels. We, we gave had. you every pixel we had access to. But uh, yeah, it looks like it was a success. So congratulations yeah. to them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, moving on, uh, we had a proton launch. It, it's a uh, Emersat, Enmersat, Inmarsat, Inmarsat Five F Two launched on a proton. Uh, we've got some footage of that. A little bit here. We have ignition. And more pixels. A few more. Oh, it's gorgeous. That is beautiful. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, so this launched Sunday, February 1st at 1231 UTC. That would be 731 AM EST or Eastern Standard Time uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Of course, like I said, this is a proton rocket. This is Enmarsat. Is that what you said? A five Inmarsat. Inmarsat. From International Launch Services. Oh, well, they do a great job with that. Uh, it's a 5F2 spacecraft. It is the second satellite of a global express system communication satellite. And it uh, is going to be providing communications. I mean, it's, it's kind of boring, but it's beautiful. And so that's why we included it, because it's gorgeous like that. See? All right, Space Mike, tell us what's going on with SpaceX. Well, SpaceX has been releasing some new details as to uh, their new test that they're going to be doing to uh, complete the requirements for the CCI cap, the Commercial Crew Integrated Capability Contract. And what that is, is the pad abort test. And they have been working on the uh, V2 Dragon capsule that is going to be used for that test. And the reason that they're using the V2 instead of uh, the, the Dragon that the Dragon 
cargo capsule that's already flying is because the V2 has the eight Super Draco thrusters that are going to be installed in it, which is going to be able to enable the, the capsule to be able to abort from a rocket either still on the pad or in flight with enough fr thrust to be able to uh, escape uh, in any scenario um, for, for that window. As well, those thrusters will hopefully uh, enable landings of this capsule uh, controlled flight landings on where, wherever target they choose uh, to, to be able to land at. So that's very cool. And um, they are going to, you can see in the picture here that they were going to be doing a, um, a facsimile of the V2 trunk section. Um, and that's what it's going to be sitting atop that it's going to pull away and escape from. That test is going to be happening in the next uh, month or so. And you can see in the video here them testing the Super Draco engines. And not only these engines can produce 120 pounds of axial thrust, which means that they are able to have a, a gimbling capabilities to be able to, to move the spacecraft. You can even see in this video that the engine on the right cut out slightly, but that those sort of maneuvers are going to be planned where certain engines are going to be counteracting for each other in order to keep the capsule stable or to, to launch it away from a rocket, you know, a, a planned uh, disassembly to be able to get away in whichever direction they need. So very cool stuff with that. They're gonna have another uh, abort test that's gonna be happening later on this year where they're actually going to be uh, aborting from a Dragon, or excuse me, a Falcon rocket that is in flight. So uh, that's gonna be a very cool test and uh, that won't be until later this year. But the pad abort test just on that facsimile of the trunk section could be happening as soon as March um, and that's going to be very exciting when that happens. They actually do that. All of those towns tests sound absolutely epic. Uh, thank you, Space Mike. Um, now, so we go. I give him the cool, interesting story. Now I get I get to bring you into the most boring thing, but it is super, super important, which is NASA's fiscal year 2016 budget request. This is the uh, this is what the the Obama administration is requesting. Um, so I'm going to read notes so I don't get it wrong. Uh, but basically, they want to ask, they're asking for $18.5 billion. And what we're looking at on the screen, by the way, while I'm going through all of this, is the budget through the years uh, based on percentage of uh, the um, tax dollars, right? So we, we went up to 4.5%, uh, and we've kind of been back down. Percentage of the federal budget, excuse me. So okay. uh, less than 5% uh, is kind of right where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Not their total overall amount, right? So that's actually been going up and to the right pretty steadily how much they've been getting. It's the sure. percentage that they've been getting um, gotcha. of your tax dollars. Uh, so uh, th they're at basically it's eight, at $18.5 billion is a request for a half billion dollar increase and includes funding to... Um, uh, continue crewed missions out into space, so human exploration, and that's going to be, um, uh, so human exploration is $8.51 billion total. Of that, the International Space Station operations is $3.106 billion. We've got commercial tr crew at $1.244 billion, but they've generally not funded commercial crew to the Obama's requested amount. So when NASA and Obama say, hey, we want, you know, this amount for commercial crew, mm -hmm. Congress generally says, you're cute. No, you can't have that much. And then they short them by however much the, they're going to on that. <laughs> but we want to. Orion and Space Launch System come out at $2.863 billion. And then the research and development at $400 million. So not a whole lot of research and development as wow. compared to the other things. Yeah. Right. And then for science, because we've got science. For science. Uh, full speed for full science. <laughs> uh, we've got $5.288 billion of that. $1.947 billion for Earth science and $1.361 for planetary science. Uh, you know, all sciences are important, although I would love to see more money at planetary science if we could. Yeah. Uh, you know, let them do some other cool things. Um, and then uh, back to commercial crew, if they don't fund at the full amount, the $1.2 billion, mm -hmm. that could create delays in commercial crew. Right now, commercial crew is slated to fly in 2017, right. uh, bringing uh, crews to the International Space Station. If NASA is unable to pay their vendors, essentially, mm -hmm. or pay, pay those milestones, and they have to delay those milestones so that they can afford it, that could potentially push commercial crew out to 2018 or later, depending upon what they found it out to. Uh, so this is not what NASA is actually getting. This is essentially what's been requested. So right. now we get to fight over this for a while. Hey. <laughs> Yay. It's going to be fun. You're going to hear about it a little bit more, and then we'll see where they actually end up. But hopefully something fairly close to what's been proposed here. Wow. So uh, to go along with that, more depressisode. It's not depressisode. A little bit, because opportunity might have to be shut down. Yeah, but opportunity 
it's like Gilligan's Island a little bit, right? They were just supposed to be out for a three-hour tour. Right. And they, they've been there for Well, and the over headline a says Opportunity. It's actually Opportunity and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, might also have to be shut down because of these budgetary concerns. Uh, what's going on here is that they may or may not get the money that they asked for, as Ben said. Uh, and the thing is that, as Ben said, Opportunity and Lo Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, were only supposed to go out for a certain amount of time. They've lasted much, much longer than that, of course. Uh, original uh, for Opportunity was only three months, and it has just hit 11 years as of January 24th, 2015. So, way to go, Oppie. Um, but because we're trying to balance uh, the budget, cutting out some older uh, missions and focusing on new development, one of those things that may go is Opportunity. Uh, opportunity is also, meanwhile, having trouble with its flash memory drive. Uh, the engineers are working around it, trying to cut off sort of the bad parts, use the good parts so we can recycle and reuse, etc., etc. Uh, David Radz uh, Radzanowski is NASA CFO, and he's looking for funding uh, in other areas, because uh, the opportunities budget had actually been cut down to zero in the, I believe it was the fiscal year of 2014, but they did find some money in some of the planetary sciences area, like, as you were saying. But he said uh, there's, he's been quoted as saying there's basically there's no guarantee. Uh, opportunity, meanwhile, has gone 26 miles on Mars surface and has logged over 200,000 images. And that basin that it was kind of coming up on there was, uh, I think it was called like Marathon Valley or Marathon Ridge, Marathon, something along those lines, because opportunity has gone. Uh, 26 miles, which is about the length of a marathon. What? Not you. I was trying to cue our director. Got it. Okay. I was like, well, I'm clearly doing something wrong. Anyway, uh, so it's unfortunate, but you know, it's it's very cool. We've got, as you said, a lot of science out of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Opportunity has provided a, very, a great opportunity, uh, and and so it's it wouldn't be the worst of all things, but it would kind of suck a little bit. So there you go. All right, throw it back to space, Mike interesting is um, Tori Bruno, the CEO of United Launch Alliance, uh, made an announcement that they were going to be making an announcement about uh, reusability. And what he did is he spoke at a uh, conference for the Student Space Initiative at Stanford University. And he did drop a couple of hints here and there. He did say that they were working on a new rocket that was not an upgrade of Delta or Atlas, but didn't really give any details as to what that rocket would be and said that that was unrelated somehow to the reusability program. And uh, I'll just kind of quickly summarize. He went on to talk about the problems of reusability and some of the possibilities and options for solving some of those problems. And I found it kind of interesting because from the way that he was talking, he would quite often throughout the speech say that, you know, if anyone in the audience has any solutions, please email me, which... <laughs> Um, which tells me they're still in the planning stages. You know, I would like to believe that Lockheed Martin or Boeing are, you know, been working on reusability in secret for the past, you know, 10 years and are about to, you know, completely blow things out of the water. But considering that SpaceX is about to launch a satellite for the uh, NOAA tomorrow and is going to be attempting another um, landing on the drone ship out in the Atlantic, they could make history tomorrow and already prove that they can do reusability and do soft touchdowns and recover their stages. So if United Launch Alliance and the duopoly of, of Lockheed and, and Boeing haven't already begun and haven't already started doing hardware and started doing tests, then I, I, I wonder about what sort of solutions they would do. You know, are they going to try to do a carbon copy of what SpaceX has been doing? Or are they going to try to follow some other roadmap to reusability? So it was a lot of, of speculation and a lot of different um, uh, problems and solutions. It was a good talk, though. I will give it that. You know, and, and there were a lot of interesting things to discuss in there and what the limits of reusability can do, at least for first stages. So um, uh, there's links that you can find on the Internet. And, and uh, um, I'll share one on, on my Epic Future Space uh, Facebooks and stuff like that because it was a good speech and you should check it out. But... Uh, other than giving people a lot of things to speculate about, there wasn't really much of an announcement other than that they're working on reusability, which they have already been doing in the past and canceled those programs. So, yeah, but, but one interesting thing, you, you did mention um, what, you know, whether they'd worked on anything before. 
you, you know, Boeing and Lockheed, not United Launch Lines, have actually worked on reusability before. If you look at like the DCX program, so That's right. this isn't completely and totally new to them. And also, uh, Lockheed was the primary contractor on the X-33, uh, which was supposed to be a single stage to orbit replacement for the space shuttle. And they actually did continue work on that. There hasn't been any news um, since about 2008. But I mean, that program was canceled um, since before con the Constellation program was announced. So that they were still working on it as, as, as recently as 2008 means that who knows, maybe they will surprise us saying, ha, ah, just kidding, we've been working on the X-33 all this time and here it is and and we're ready to try it out. So they're, for all I know, they're Lockheed and even Boeing could be having some sort of uh, trump car that they've been hiding all this time. I, I think they, uh, Tori basically said the space symposium, that's when all the cool announcements are gonna happen. Uh, if I remember right from the speech, he was like, he kept referring to like, I'm not going to talk about that now, but Space Symposium. Not going to talk about that now, but Space Symposium. So that seems like one of those events that the space geeks should definitely tune into and see what United Launch Alliance is up to. And then let us know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if somebody watch the symposium for us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> then let us know. <laughs> Email us and let us know how it went. Right, exactly. <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> or the <laughs> organizers of the Space Symposium should just invite us to come and we can cover it. Ooh. I All like right, we're, be we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, comments from last week's show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And well, welcome back. Stop distracting us. We're doing a show. <laughs> Gah! I'd like to thank all of the patrons of tomorrow who've helped to make this specific segment of this episode happen. These are the Patreon Plus subscribers. They've contributed $3 or more to this specific segment. Uh, so a huge thank you to everyone. And they're all color-coded still, so hopefully you guys like that. But oh no, there's more. We've got our Patreon subscribers. These are the people who've contributed between $1 and $2.99 each and every episode to help make this go. So that's about the about the cost of a cup of coffee. Uh, you, you, instead depending of buying that go, coffee. For sure. Yeah, don't buy that. Yeah, depending upon where you go. <laughs> Not necessarily Folgers. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, depending upon where you go, you just give up one coffee per week and you can help fund a show about space. For more information on how you can help crowdfund tomorrow, head on over to patreon.com slash T-M-R-O. All right, let's go ahead and get into some comments from last week's show. First up. Uh, comes from Rojo and Roll. At least Ro that's, I'm just gonna. Ro that's at M-U-F-C underscore news underscore Jim. Yep. Uh, says, <laughs> uh, from Twitter, says, uh, what is Space Mike's YouTube channel called? Uh, Space Mike, what's your YouTube channel called? It is called Epic Future Space. Uh, you can type that into the Google search bar or in Google itself, or, or I meant the YouTube search bar or Google itself, and uh, that'll come up. Or um, if you want to put in the link, it's uh, youtube.com slash O-T Mikhail, O-T-M-I-K-H-A-I-L. I, I have a question for you. Why do you make that so hard for us? <laughs> 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 make it Epic Future Space. I just search Google for Epic Future Space. You'll find Mike, right? Yeah. Well, I'm, I've actually had some complications with stuff, so I'm probably going to be moving over to that. Because I do have an Epic Future Space channel that I haven't uploaded on. That is, the link is youtube.com slash Epic Future Space. But there's like two subscribers on it, so I just went with the original channel that I was. But I've had some complications with that one, so I might be having to switch over to that anyway. Ah, so. the pains of changing a name. Don't we know what the pains of changing YouTube <sighs> channels are? And by the way, if you're watching this on our old channel, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to our new channel, <laughs> youtube.com slash T-M-R-O. Every subscriber helps. Actually, we did get a good chunk of them back right away. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind going back to the new channel, because uh, people, advertisers and groups that are working with us like to see those subscriber numbers, whether they're relevant or not. Uh, it's a silly way to measure stuff, but they want it. All right, moving right along. 
coming from Quantum G on Twitter, says, Dave Mastin has all the time he needs to conquer space. He hasn't aged a day since I've known him. I know. Cyborg? I think he's, he, I think he, what's the opposite of aging? Like the, the Benjamin Button syndrome? Right, right. What is that called? I don't remember. Anyone? But Anyone? yes. Anyone? No? All right. There's, yeah, I, because he got that like shorter haircut and yeah. now he actually looks and younger. he looks younger. I yeah, know. it's weird. It was weird. He was on the show and I'm like, can I look at you? Yeah. Is that so. why you were fumbling around so much and just couldn't speak? And <laughs> yeah, that was that, why. That, that was, was why. Yeah? That was why. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was, I was flustered. Uh -huh. I, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, All right, moving on. And I had Leo Camacho on kept my stuff together. Well, that's why that's why you had to do the Leo interview because you know that's good. By the way, uh, for those of you who are going to watch After Dark, I'm just going to forewarn you: it is going to be Disney heavy because Leo is a Disney. Yeah, geek. Nate's just going to leave. Yeah, I mean, this is he's going to talk to us about Disney bounding, the difference between Disney bounding and cosplay. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing, and it's going to be Disney based. So just so you know, all right. Next up. Okay, uh, comes from uh, Roke, says, On Mars, you use a CO2 extinguisher that's already there. You just open the hatch. Okay, okay. So this, this if you go to this our... This actually came from our news item. Uh, yeah, so this this is a long conversation that happened on YouTube what? that we con condensed into one sentence. Yes. Uh, which was, um, the, the concept being going to Mars first is hard because you don't have safety. Sure. You, the original story was yes. that there was a, a fire. fire at the Mars Desert Research Station. There you go. And it just goes to show that if there was a fire on Mars, a similar fire, what would they do? Right. And ev I think everyone kind of um, got into the technicality of the problem and not the spirit of the problem. Right, because the fire started in... Uh, the their, greenhouse. So they're yes. like, we'll just open the door. Well, that's okay. That's great. But the spirit of the problem is, all right, now move that fire to the hab. Right. Move that fire anywhere else where you can't just open a door. You'll, I mean, you'll have to get everyone into suits. Can you do that fast enough? Right. I mean, yeah, this happened in the greenhouse, but it could have happened anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that could happen anywhere on the Mars Hab. And this mm -hmm. is where the concept of moon first comes from. Mm -hmm. Not to say it's the only way of doing it, but, you know, that's the argument for moon first. So just wanted to point out that it's not that specific example only of things that can go wrong on Mars. Right. It's... The spirit of the idea of things that can go wrong on Mars. Right. Anything like that could happen. If we can't even control it on Earth, imagine what it's going to be like when you have to wait three years for help as opposed to three days or two years, two to three years. You, know, it, the, it, yes. it, you get the idea. All right, moving along. Okay, so Herala from YouTube says, Minor correction. The Dragon V2 thrusters are called Super Dracos. The Dracos are the small RCS thrusters. The reaction control thrusters. Um... Yeah, I don't remember us actually confusing that on the show. Uh, there, I, I, either, I but... thought there were actually both. I could oh, be Mike is raising his hand. Mike, go, that Mike. That was me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was me. And you're absolutely right. They're super Dracos. The Dracos are just the RCS thrusters. You're absolutely right. But I believe they still have both. Donna, do you still have the picture of uh, uh, Dragon V2? Because I don't actually remember. This is going to be great because I'm going to pop up right back here. There, there you go. go. Um, can't tell. <laughs> yeah, really difficult I, I to tell. I can't tell sure. if we still have... I don't know if there are Dracos and Super Dracos on there, or... Because th those could be Dracos right. on the they side. I have no idea. Anyhow, um, yeah, you've got Super Dracos that are going to help your abort and your uh, your landing kind of stuff. And then I'm You know, not it's sure. funny. We always have this complaint about how uh, all these engines have these nonsensical names. The, you know, the... And then you got Draco. The RD-180s, and, and I can't tell the difference between the RD-180s and the RD-170s. The 171. <laughs> right, right. But now you've got Dracos and Super Dracos, and I still can't tell the difference between the two of them or where they are and all that other fun you stuff. You should be able to. They're very, very different No, I know, but I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying is that verbally... <laughs> tell me you can tell the difference. <laughs> I, can make, I can make a coffee table out of one of them, right? Uh, <laughs> very it, small. Very small coffee table. <laughs> you went the wrong... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Moving so, on, moving right. on. I, we I get your point. Moving right, on, moving right, on. All right. All right. So, uh, Nitesh Patel from Patreon actually says, Putting science aside, the whole point of going back to the moon is to get companies and agencies back into the practice of building vehicles destined for out-of-orbit travel and get public more excited about space overall. Yes, and it was mentioned earlier, I think, the general idea of being able to look up at the moon and go, there are people there, is way more inspiring than looking up and going, Mars is somewhere. <laughs> and that was actually an argument I made to someone, totally. it, which is, which is, all right, you know, go outside now, you know, point to Mars for me. And then, uh, okay, I can't, I need my phone. Right, I'm like, all right, now point to the moon for me. And just, right there, right? D depending upon if it's visible or not. Uh, and, then, and yeah, I mean, and it's just, it's just a huge difference between the two. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah pointing that's... to the fly like, down the <laughs> other side of Earth. Right, so. It is noon, man. How dare you? <laughs> uh, so Brandon Mark from Reddit says, I quite enjoyed the disagreement between the hosts. It's not like y'all have to agree. Presenting both void pr viewpoints. Void points. Void point. Presenting both viewpoints while disagreeing makes for compelling watching. My void point. That's, is, you know what? Actually, we more... have so many cameras in our apartment. We might as well just link them up and just be live all the time. So you know, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I just want to avoid becoming that one news station that we all know, where you're just a bunch of screaming heads at everyone. But you're not wrong. We can have different viewpoints. It, it, some of this stuff is opinion, like Moon or Mars first. I, I'm not sure what's right. Uh, realistically, I mean, Dave Mastin seems to think Moon first. He has some compelling arguments. Uh, other people like Elon Musk seems to think Mars first and he has some compelling arguments as long as we're going to both I don't really care right yeah. but we shouldn't stop at the moon or stop at Mars or go okay well we've done that now we need to and th those aren't the final destinations either those are just the first destinations and we need to keep going out to the solar system and exploring as much stuff as we can I would love to go swimming on Enceladus sometime mm, swimming might be bad it might be cold um like, but yeah. Like a submarine, maybe? Yes. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yes. Agreed. Right. Okay. Uh, and then Yen uh, Smolik from Reddit also says... Smolik. I'm going to... I'm sure I apologize for mispronouncing all these names. No, it's an uh, awesome Smolik. <laughs> Sounds like something on Lord of the Rings. It does, actually. Uh, we should start building systems that get us to Mars now because it is hard. But meanwhile, we should use what we have and go to the moon because it is easy and we can go now. No. <laughs> <laughs> None of it is easy. If it was oh. easy, we would be there. Yeah. All of it is hard. And I don't want to say it's equally hard, but going to the moon versus going to Mars, the, the difficulty levels, it's not that much more difficult to go to Mars. You have a different subset of issues that make it hard. Yes. But then you have a subset of issues on the moon, like I'm just going to throw out lunar regolith that make the moon harder than Mars. Yeah. But then you've got atmosphere on Mars that you've got to land in, and that makes Mars hard. So yeah, they're... They're hard in different ways. They're hard in different ways, but they're both very, very difficult to get to. Don't be fooled by us going to the moon in the late 60s, early 70s and going, oh, well, obviously technology is advanced, and so now everything's way Duh. easier. It's, it's still physics, and it's still hard, yeah. and it's still you want to bring up a lot of stuff, and that's not easy to do. So there you go. That's our show for this week. Uh, if you'd like to leave comments, hashtag TMRO on Twitter is the best way to reach us. Otherwise, you've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash TMRO.TV, or leave your comment on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Disney After Dark, I mean, After Dark is up next.